Hey guys, this is Sprague with 1080 The Fan, and you're listening to the douchiest guys I've ever met in my life, the Bleach Bros Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. Or don't, because they suck. Welcome into the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is B-Word, and I am here again in person with this dude named Jake the Hater. We're doing it live, as Bill O'Reilly would say. All right. We're doing it live. Fuck it. We're going live. <laughs> We're going live. Fuck it. Fuck it. So how you doing, man? I'm great, dude. You, I You had one hell of a drive today, right? Well, I drive fast, so it wasn't that bad. Like, I knew when I texted you and said, I'm really fucking flying. You were like three hours early. Yeah, dude. I uh, I left at three. Uh, I, le- I got up at three. I left about three thirty eight exactly. You know me with time. I woke up at three eleven exactly. Because I don't know if you know this about me. I don't set alarms at normal times. Right. Like I have to offset it. Like so. Originally, my alarm was set for three o three, and I thought that was bad luck. So I set for three eleven with no rhyme or reason. But would three o three mean that you? Uh that you're like one of those songs from 303? The worst part is 311, I thought of Grassroots and that band. So. <laughs> well, see, 311, I was thinking like Amber's the color of your energy, bro. I fucking love that band. I know. 311's but good. Anyways, I, I leave early, get the mom in the car. I packed it the night before, wrapped everything in the very back, even though there's a tunnel cover with tarps because it's so it's been raining nonstop in, in my neck of the woods. Dude, you found the sun today. The golden orb in the sky that sucks, as my daughter says, because you, you, you hung out with Adeline, my my middle child, right? The, the fucking riot that she is. Um, she says the sun bites her. When, oh, because we barely stings. get because it, it stings when it comes out. And yeah. It bites her, and sometimes it makes her skin a little red. <laughs> so she hates the biting gold orb that's in the sky. It sucks, dude. <sighs> my eyes feel a little burnt, but I drove very fast. I went a beautiful route, though. Um, got here. Th- about two and a half hours earlier than I should have. Because you were supposed to get here right around three. About 2.30. And I got a text message from you right around, (laughs) yeah, right around like 11.30 that says, uh, I think we're early. Yeah, yeah, really, really (laughs) fucking, dude, that, uh, that, I don't even want to say how fast I was going. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to leave that off of the Um, podcast. (laughs) Yeah, so we drove fast, so we went and got lunch at a place you recommended, Silver Peak in Reno. Good. Reno. Good food. Um, waiter was super nice. Helped out my mama because she has celiac. So right. she actually can't. It's not that bad. Can't have gluten. Like, she'll fucking die. Yeah. So helped us out with that. He sat with us. It was the first time my mom's ever had a waiter actually go through every menu item to tell her what she could and could not have. Yeah, you told me about that tonight. I'll tell you, that was really cool because he took the time to actually get to know mm-hmm. her. And then he actually, like, coached her through the menu. And she ended up loving the food. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Food was great. I mean, I had a uh, pesto tortellini with chicken, which I, I tell you, if anything, if I, if, if pesto is ever on the menu, I'm probably going to order it with pasta. It's my yeah. favorite. It's my favorite sauce. Right. For pasta, um, something bright and fresh. My mama got uh, the steak salad. Okay. So she's a, she's a red meat, meat and potato woman, you know, but she got the salad with the lemon vinaigrette. It was delicious as well. I tried it. Um, yeah, I had a good drive, and then we just drove around a bit. You showed us all over Carson, Genoa. Tahoe. Uh, Tahoe. Took some beautiful pictures. Put yeah. Sal the Salty Hippo at the top of the mountain. We There is a Sal the Salty Hippo sticker in Incline Village as we speak. That's right. Hell yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll post some pictures on our on our, on our our socials. But uh, yeah, man, you know, it's, it was actually really cool. I mean, we kind of reminisced a little bit. We had uh, good Mexican food because, mm-hmm. you know, they don't have that where you're at. No. And I think both of us are about comatose right now. I ate way too much food. Yeah. I ate way too much food. I took your daughter's advice. Uh-huh. She was pretty awesome. She says if somebody else is paying, order for two. That's right. So I ate probably two people's dinner, and then I ate part of my mama's dinner, too. Yeah. yeah you um, went to town, and you had a whole bunch of chips and salsa, too. I did have a whole bunch of chips and salsa. <laughs> I had two Roy Rogers, which is a, a non-alcoholic drink, but it was delicious. Yeah. I love me a Roy Rogers. Um, yeah, dude, it's been a good time. Uh, got a great hotel. You hooked us up with that, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, and then we're leaving early, and we're going to get breakfast at a Basque restaurant. Yeah, dude, I'm going to show you this uh, this Basque restaurant here in Carson called Villa Basque. I love Basque food. And they are known for their chorizo. Okay. And it, I'm telling you what, man, we were actually, this last weekend, we were up in Virginia City. It was uh, me and a few friends, and we were talking about Villa Basque, if their breakfast is better than their lunch. Okay. And it was a heated debate because a uh, few, few of us, including me, myself, think that, 
breakfast is so much better at Villa Bath than lunch is. That just kind of shows you that that's actually a good restaurant, being that people actually argue about that type of stuff. As you were talking, I was thinking like AJ Limer, and I really wanted to come up with a shitty dad joke and go, <laughs> so you chose the egg before the chicken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I love I like, you, dads I, on Dayquil. I, Sorry, AJ. No, not, not I like bullshit. I like that you didn't like pull a dome, and you're like, oh, so you love the chorizo? <laughs> <laughs> Spicy Spanish sausage. Oh yeah, dude, uh, it's so good. Oh, I'm going to see AJ too. Yeah, Thursday. dude. Thursday, we're going to be. Got, we, you've got. A, this is a good week, man. We, we're going to both. We're both going to see the Batman. Mm-hmm. You're going to meet up with uh, with the Stoned mm-hmm. from Dad's on Dayquil. You're also going to see your brother. Uh, I'm going to be able to send some beer down to your brother, which I've been trying to give him for like six months now. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, man, it's it's going to be a good time. I think. Uh, I think it's going to be a good week. You're on vacation, but you're away from the wife, dude. How are you going to handle that? Fine. Um, I got in some some good time right before I left. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some some make you miss me time. Some yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. No, we had a we had a good time. The kids are doing okay. Because also, uh, but you know this. Next week she's flying out. She is. Um, because I said, hey, if I'm taking a trip. You got to have some yeah. time off to yourself too. And I'm working. The, the difference is she's off work with the kids and I'm not downgrading this, right? Because I know being a, right? a full-time mom is a full-time job. But I'm going to be a full-time dad and full-time working at the same time while she's out of town. She's so, going to a spa treatment with my mama and my sister. So full-time is considered, at least in this state, 32 hours or more a week. How many, oh, then, how many hours are you putting in, bro? Uh, for, oh, well, wait, well, which time are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, daddy time, not daddy time. Daddy See, time. Daddy time. Well, yeah, <laughs> pa- Papa time. Chorizo time. Chorizo time. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I. Uh, I'm full time, overtime. Well, oh, you mean my actual job? Yeah, your actual job. <laughs> Fuck bro. you! Don't even know. Don't even bring that up. Everybody, gets, my brother. So my brother calls me the other day, right? Because I was booking the. Um, I booked us at a restaurant I really want to go to by Roy Kim. Yeah. Called Best Friend. It's a Korean restaurant in the MGM. Very excited for that. We're gonna have a chef's dinner. He's never had that. Okay. Um, and just just a quick reminder for the or you know for people that don't know, it's where you, the chef essentially makes a menu and you pay him a flat fee, and, or him or her, and they bring out their specialty dishes. Yep. And it's like it could be anywhere from like six to twelve courses on average, right? Um, so we're my brother's never done that. We're going to experience that together. That'll be fun. Um, and then I booked tickets for the Batman. Yeah. So I'm booking these times. My brother works early. And I'm like, well, you know, like when you came, I was working. He goes, fuck you. You don't work. <laughs> and I'm like, I make good money. He goes, no, no, no. I didn't say you didn't make good money. I said, you don't work. I'm like, what does that mean? He goes, Yo, you're sort of like, oh, yeah, we can go golfing today. We can uh-huh. do this and bring my laptop and stuff. And I hope nobody from my work's listening. But it's fucking true. <laughs> I mean, let's be I've But I've worked my it's, ass off to get here. It's networking, bro. I, I've you're, networked you're, well. You're networking. <laughs> I you're network, networking. And I've networked well my whole yeah. life, b <laughs> But uh, you did end up getting a shoe tree hat. I did. And uh, right after we're done recording this, I'm going to stop you by shoe tree. So I'll show you that. And then you got yourself... I wanted, so I am, and you, you can attest to this B word. You've known me a long time. If I want something, I, I go get it. Right. Um, but I'll also sometimes like, like, and this is for an item, not, you know, people to be creepy. But there's a Batman special popcorn tin that Cinemark came out with. It looks yes. badass. It's red and black and metal. And and I, for some reason, I wanted it. I eat a lot of popcorn. It's one of my favorite snacks, as we right. talked about, especially with movies. And I just wanted this tin. Yeah. And I talked to you about it because I don't have Cinemark close to me. I think the close one's an hour, an hour and a half away. Right. And I didn't want to drive and then them not have it or find out the cost. I hated it. So I was looking on eBay and I asked you about it. And then you surprised me. You went and picked me up one. I did. And I already bought one on eBay. So I had to cancel <laughs> that, which I'm happy because I paid six times the actual price <laughs> of what the thing's going for. But I didn't care. I would See, I would still would have paid that. But I'm very grateful for you because you drove over there. You got yourself one. You got me one. And mine, mine actually still has a little bit of popcorn in it from yesterday. But yeah, it's it's a legit thing. Like if if you're gonna go see the Batman this weekend, because this this episode's gonna come out on Sunday. So if you're gonna go see the Batman, you're near Cinemark. Go and get it. It's it's legit, dude. It's it's gonna stand the test of time. It's not as good as my little Spidey up there. I also have a Hulk up there. Where I like the Batman better than the Spidey. Well, yeah, yeah. That's like almost like a Funko Pop. Like it does look like a. It Funko looks Pop. like um, if Sloth from the Goonies and Funko Pop made a Spider Man <laughs> baby. Like, hey, you webs. <laughs> Fantastic, oh, man. Well, buddy, you ready to take a little ad? Yep. What's up, guys? My name is Gunner, and my mom and dad have this really cool podcast. I think you should check it out. It's called Happy Hour Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter. 
listen to us on Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. Bleach Bros Podcast is proud to align itself with Jerky Pro, a beef jerky manufacturer established by military and paramilitary veterans. Available in three ounce or one pound bags with great flavors such as honey glazed, teriyaki, red hot, apple cinnamon, original, peppered, sweet barbecue, and if you're ballsy enough, nuclear. Be sure to use our promo code to get some of the best jerky on the market. Use Bleach Bros 5, all lowercase, to take advantage of this offer today. All right, so you heard that we are now partnering our brand with Jerky Pro. And I'm pretty excited about this, dude. I love jerky, first and foremost. Um, but what are your thoughts on this, Mr. Chef? Oh, I love beef jerky. It's one of my right? favorite things. I'm, I, and I work for a specialty meat company now. Yeah. Up front. And, um, love beef jerky. It's my favorite snack, especially on road trips. Um, I'll spend the extra money for something really good. Yeah. Um, but they have some of the best I've ever had. Great flavors, a great variety. They come shredded as well. So we're very excited to partner with them. I know they partner a lot with eSports too, so that was cool because yep. I'm a big eSports follower. Yep. Uh, so be sure to, yeah, go over there, check out their website, check out some of their products. Um, good local little company. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy that we're going to be working together. Well, and, so. and definitely check them out. Um, they the, the history of the company is really cool. They're either paramilitary or military veterans. Uh, they take pride in the company, and uh, for us partnering with them, you actually get a little bit of a discount, so uh, use our code. It's Bleach Bros 5. Make sure to use all lowercase because uh, yeah, it case is case sensitive. sensitive, but Bleach Bros 5 to get yourself a little bit of a discount. But then the second ad that you heard today, or at least the promo, I guess we shouldn't say an ad, uh, was from Happy Hour Podcast, yeah. and it was from Gunner. And Gunner's like my favorite little dude. Like I know that you have a little dude, and like he's, yeah. but different ages here. Right. Gunner's my favorite little dude. Yeah, he's given he's given a lot of uh, love to the podcast community. Yeah, he a is. A lot of shout outs. We gave him a, a birthday shout out, so happy birthday again, little yeah. bro. Um, I know we've been on their show and partnered with them. We're excited to have Mike come on. We're gonna have a lot of fun uh, nerding out. I think. Yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of DC versus Marvel because yeah. you know, uh, as as if you've followed this podcast with any sort of length of time, you know that Jake and I tend to like Marvel better than DC, but uh, but we both love DC. But Mike is different. Mike is opposite though, bro. Well, my question on that is: Do you think Gunner is doing that thing? Like you know, his dad is, you know, like making him like DC or does he have his own little like Gunner badass opinion? I bet you Gunner has his own little He better. He better, dude. Yeah. I hope it's like Batman versus Superman in their house then. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing that Tabby's not named Martha cuz that would be really bad. Martha. <laughs> so, we had the opportunity to watch a couple episodes on a new Netflix special. And it seems like when we watch a good documentary, both of us are sending messages to each other via text, whatever says, hey, watch this, right? Right. And so I actually found this through YouTube. Uh, it was a little clip of Jamie Foxx uh, doing, doing a little voice track for Kanye West um, for the song Slow Jams. And I love Kanye West music. I, I think he, he's a prodigy. He's a genius. Um, so we decided that uh, we were going to actually talk a little bit about the Netflix special, but the entire Netflix special is not done. So first and foremost, we've watched two of the three episodes. The third one is actually going to air after we record this. So we're only going to talk about the first two episodes, but Jake, I have a question for you as far as, um, the, the documentary itself. I know that the last documentary we talked about was the Cosby show and we talked about the um, the genius of uh, Kamal Bell. And you how mean genius? The genius, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, Kamal Bell really did a good job of putting together We Need to Talk About Cosby. Right. What's your thought process on how this one's put together? I like the fact that this has been being recorded essentially since Kanye's birth, if it was. Yeah. Like, in essentially not, you know, not, not, but his birth right into the, into the rap community almost. Like, he was already in there. Right. But, like... I love when you get to see the whole background. I mean, that's why I love the documentary Val, right? right with Val Kilmer. Right. It was him recording. And so I think this is the new way a lot of documentarians about, about stars, let's say, are doing this. Um, and I love it. I love that it, it can backtrack. I mean, because we essentially have retainer Kanye. Right. As I'm going to call him. Right. Um, the young one. The, gummy. The, the prodigy. Gummy you know, the, yay. Yeah. 
Um, and then we, of course, then we get into swollen mouth, Kanye. Right, but also we get the, um, you know, everything coming out of his mouth is is fucking just gold lyrics because mm-hmm. he finally gets accepted, right? Right. And then uh, the final yay I would call or ye- Yeezy I would call him is the uneasy Yeezy. I would call him Crayye. <laughs> okay, that's fine, Crayye. Yeah. The uneasy Yeezy <laughs> or or Crayye is great, and I mean that's fine. I mean you get all three decades, right? And so for three episodes, but so far it's 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 very well done. Um, I, and I think it's it's not just like here it is we're gonna talk about it. it's showing you where you can see how like one of my favorite scenes is where he's in Rockefeller Records and it's very eye opening to see the grassroots sort of like yeah. come up of Rockefeller because you expected a glass building and all right. that. and it's not that that but no. th- what they were doing but him walking st- uh, room to room yeah and putting in a di- in the in the uh, tape. A, a cassette tape or, or, you know, I didn't know if it was a CD or it was a CD. I thought in, but it was still one of those giant stereos, right? right? He's putting in, they're half listening, half not. They're having meetings. It's getting interrupted. And him just like being like, please listen to this. Please listen to this. Yeah. Please listen to this. And they're like, they are. And it sounds fucking banging. And of course it's a hit song that we all love. Right. And they're just like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's amazing to me how people actually took what he was bringing to the table for granted because I felt like, so the, um, I don't remember what the song was that he was bringing in in the first episode, but in the second episode, he was bringing to the table through the wire. And that's the one that caught fire. And that's the one that I think got everybody's attention. But the one that he, um, in the first episode, I think was can't tell me nothing. Am am I right on that? Yeah. And so, um, regardless, he he was looked at as this very successful. And maybe it's not cut. Tell me, I'm sorry. I just want to say that because if we're wrong, it might. Yeah. It's been a few days since we watched it, but anyway, um, he, he was looked at as this very talented, very successful, wet behind the ears music producer. Mm-hmm. And he was fit in that box. Like he, he was told to stay in the box more or less. He was signed as a rapper, but they never gave him an opportunity. But to, to watch to the extent that he went to when it's, he was doing slam poetry and he's doing he's he's like working on his vocals that way or he's trying to get a rap uh, a, a rap uh, verse on Jay-Z stuff or you know there's just so many different things as to why he's trying to do it but from a documentary standpoint what I thought was great was how intimate it was. Mm-hmm. It was it was his friend group. It was their interactions with each other. It was them trying to build each other up while also trying to find out how to even break through because none of them have, have broken through at this point. And, you know, he had gone from Chicago to New York. Um, I imagine he failed all along the way. Um, but what I thought was great was is that his, his buddy, is it Cooter or... or Cootie. Cootie. Not Cooter. Um, well, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I like Cooters. Um, but his his buddy Cootie decided, he, you know, he was a stand-up comic, and he decided that he was just going to drop the stand-up mic and then grab the documentary camera. And I that, that flabbergasted That flabbergasted me, and here's why. It, it, when he said that at first, I was like, okay, he's doing that TV show. Yeah, he was doing uh, um, Net, Net Zero or... Um, or well, he's doing that. He's doing that. Channel Zero. Channel Zero. Channel yeah. Zero, and he's interviewing famous rap stars. And you know, he's doing yeah. it well. And then, like, he was like, "Oh, I was doing stand up." So at first, I'm thinking, "Okay, he's just in bars. He's trying to get big." And yeah. then seeing that he's actually on specials and stuff, I'm going, "Holy yeah. shit!" And to drop it like that because he believed in somebody so much, which which is a prodigy. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah. the stuff he's putting out, it's like, yeah, he should be big. Right. And me looking at it going, how do they not see this? Right. But it, it reminded me of two things: the Joker scene in The Dark Knight. When he says, why do something for free when you can be paid for it? Yes. The adverse effect that I remember when I was um, doing work on the radio in, in Vegas. And there was a host on X-175 named Hambone. He had Hambone, Mahoney, those late night yeah, guys, remember? Yeah. And he goes, he called me one day. He goes, Jake, just stop. I said, what do you mean? He goes, stop. Like, giving us stuff. Stop doing stuff. Right. And the same thing happened when I moved to Portland with Jay Allen with the Blazers. He's like, Jake, stop showing up to the studio. I said, why? He goes, they're not paying you enough or they're not paying you at all and you're doing it for free and they know you will. And I feel like that's what was happening to Kanye is the studio was like, well, we know the carrots here that he wants Uh to be a rapper and we can keep it there. But doing that, he'll keep producing forever. And it made me feel bad. It made me, you know, think of how the music industry is. And also that's, I think, why he's in the, what he's doing now with how he releases music. 
Well, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you you talk about some of these people who are excellent producers turned rappers, and you look at, you know, Dr. Dre as an example. Dr. Dre did a phenomenal job producing music. Go go Even go back to just recently the uh, halftime show uh, for the Super Bowl. The halftime show was done eloquently. You look at Pharrell Williams. Pharrell at the time, at the same time of this documentary, was known as a producer, but he was starting to get into the music side of it. He was starting to get into the rap side of it, whereas Kanye couldn't even break that wall yet. He couldn't even break the glass to get in there. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a testament to Kanye's tenacity to be able to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to succeed at this because this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And you know what I loved most? I think this was in the first episode uh, before he got into his car accident. He was, uh, it showed him with his mom, mm-hmm. his mom Donda. I didn't know that her name yeah. was Donda. Uh, so that's interesting. But, uh, uh, and she was rapping his music with him. Like mm-hmm. she was such a fan of him that she learned his lyrics to spit his lyrics back at him. Mm-hmm. I just thought that that was a great, uh, a great relationship on film. Yeah, but that, that also goes to the, the moment of where, you know, your parents sometimes can be your best fans like in the yeah. sense of like you know helping you promote and, and helping you cheer you on and not give up because like when he when when you going back to his spitting lyrics and stuff and, and his slam poetry in the first episode when you hear him recording lyrics mm-hmm. and there's no beat behind it and you know it's the headphones on it's like a studio yeah. i'm sitting there going man it doesn't sound that great and all i'm thinking is yeah but you put other stuff over it and layers and that's the difference of him i think a lot of people and and just being up front in the music and and a lot of things right this could include podcasts and stuff there's not always that care that goes behind right. things or or the care of quality goes out there they're like i have really good lyrics that's great but how's your beat sound how's this and i the, the problem is is his ego got big i think because he does everything well and it yeah. shows in that. Like, yeah. And I think everybody knew that, that he could produce amazing stuff. Like when he had the the quote that he was going to um, bring 70s music yeah. into. And yeah. I mean, because to be honest, I had my mom in the car today. Yeah. And we were talking about, you know, the show tonight, like what we're going to talk about. And she's like, oh, really? You're going to talk about Kanye? And I was yeah. like, yeah. She goes, oh, isn't he crazy? I was like, that's not what we're just talking about. So I started telling her, she goes, oh, do you like his music? I was like, his music's fucking his great, music, mom. His music's you great. you want to hear it? And she goes, no, thank you. Like, my yeah. mom's just like, no. And so I started explaining. She goes, really? I never would have thought like 70s music with him. And I was like, yeah. And mind you, she's never listened to it. My mom's right. not a rap fan, so I get right. that. You know, but it's the fact that I was explaining those things and me just describing it and stuff. I saw her ears perk up a little bit, just be like, oh, wow. Like, I never would have thought like almost that like Ray Charles classic style singing mixed with this and then mixed with a beat. But then, you know, having some of those old horns and stuff come into it. He, he helped really develop that sound. He did. And I think it's, I think it was almost a progression because if you look at like some of the things that Puffy introduced it to introduce with big, with his music style, because you remember when big came out, he was a battle rapper. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't the rhythmic guy that we, that we know today. He was the battle rapper. And as soon as he got to Puffy, you, you think of songs like hypnotized where he's got that nice, you know, R and B sound. And then he drops lyrics on that. That's, that's step one, if you will. Mm-hmm. And then step two was what Kanye was doing, where he's bringing in the Ray Charles sound. He's bringing in the horns. He's bringing in um, the, the, the different music styles of the same genre. It's just expounded on a little bit more. And I thought it was genius, man. I, the, the only thing that I could genius. come up with, it was genius. Uh, the only thing that I can really come up with as far as a word or an adjective to try to describe this is he was an absolute prodigy. Mm-hmm. Like his his talent level, his ability to hear things, his ability to um, to understand how the flow of the of the words coming out of your mouth matches up with the music. That's so far beyond talent that I can that I can comprehend that I was just flabbergasted by it. I, I just I, and, and I think that that's a testament also to the amount of content and the intimacy that we got of being able to see almost like his thought process. I mean, we were with him in that documentary. It didn't seem like, you know, a whole long time. Each episode's about an hour and a half. But I felt like I was with him every day of his journey in that episode. Mm -hmm. Like you saw him grow. You saw him battle. You saw him uh, talk to people in the industry who shrugged him off. Mm -hmm. You saw him, you saw people from other recording studios, from other, from other labels that, that are giving him advice because none of the top brass want to sign him, but they realize his talent. Like, you know, that, that's a real testament to his tenacity. I think that he did a phenomenal job of 
getting his name out there as a producer, but then transitioning it into uh, Kanye that we know today. Yeah, and I think and I think that's the problem too. You brought up a good point, Kanye. Today, right? Is people always judge everything right now? Um, just just as the adverse thing, they'll look up a tweet ten years ago and cancel right. somebody out, right? But like, we're I think a lot of people are forgetting the and maybe they're not. I mean, but I don't know. Like the the what he brought to the table with the culture of hip hop and how he changed it. I mean, I and I, to be honest, until I was older, I never really knew he produced H to the Izzo. Oh, really? No, I just, I mean, I didn't really, I never really looked at who produced albums. The only time I did is when I lived with the Travesty, because the Travesty produced, Mm -hmm. and that, that's when he introduced me to Rick Rubin. Okay. And then I started paying attention to, oh, like, there's actually a matter behind the people, not, it's not just somebody going in a studio and hitting record, and then they just record great stuff and put it out. And that was my own ignorance of, like, music, just, I enjoyed music, right? I listened to it, and I never really thought of the background people. Right. Um, and then to find out that he did that, I mean, cause you know, when I was introduced to Kanye, I knew him as the rapper. Well, not to bring up Dr. Dre again, but, but Dr. Dre was the dude that was laying down the beats for NWA. <laughs> and part of his issue was, is he felt like he wasn't appreciated monetarily in the same manner that, that, you know, he should have been. And I think that was probably everybody but easy. He felt that way. But when you, when you talk about that and then you go into Dre, like Dre will not release something until it's perfect. Which is a problem in itself. It is. And and so I appreciate Kanye's music. I think that Kanye's done a good job of um, putting out some different musics for different for different time frames. For instance, his Donda album's really good. But I'm I love graduation too. I mean, ev- pretty much everything in his catalog has a purpose. Everything in his catalog kind of describes who he was at that time. Mm-hmm. So let me uh, let me ask you this. If you were to take a Kanye from any decade, which Kanye would you take, whether it be music or Kanye as a person, and why? So I got retainer Kanye, <laughs> young Kanye, producer Kanye. Okay. I got, uh, what do we call the middle one? Just Can't tell me nothing, Kanye. Can't tell me nothing, Kanye. Or I got Yeezy Easy, or what did you call him? Uh, Craye. Craye. I'm going with Craye. You're going to go with Cray? Oh, I love Cray. Yeah. Here's why. It's so eye-opening to what... It, here's the thing. I We had a whole episode on mental health, right? Right. And being somebody who can go through some of those things, seeing somebody grow, but also see... I, I know he's going to come out the other side. Yeah. But also seeing ego drive somebody to do certain things. Because I, I think his ego is huge, too, for himself, and that's a problem. I right? agree with that. Um, but I love this New Age Kanye because I like the music coming out. Yeah. Um, I, I like that he just... Stand, he is just is who he is. I That's th- what I appreciate. I do think that his authenticity is is one of his best traits. He doesn't care what people think, um, and he really doesn't. But, uh, but I say that, but I do think that he cares what you know Kim Kardashian thinks. Which I hope nothing happens there. I'm not. I'm not trying to. And me being the hater, it's like I like a little drama with my with I, my Kanye. I'm okay with it. I like the memes. You know, I, I like the memes of Kanye today. Uh, Pete Davidson's a punk, and so I kind of hope that oh. he, he loses in this battle because I just I'm not a big fan of Pete Davidson. I don't think he's funny. Right. I think he's ugly. I don't understand how he's getting women. I mean, he's got to have a a rooster tattoo right under his knee because there is no way he's got a cock swinging <laughs> under his knee. But um, yeah, he's uh, I don't know. But back to Kanye. Cray-yay. Cray-yay ba- is ba- my guy. Back to Cray. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. You know, okay. So, it, do you think his music's better now? Artistically, yes. Explain that. Artistically, by by it's the music he really, really, really wants to produce, not what the sound is right now. Okay. So I, and what I mean is, I think his back catalog is amazing, right? And I right. and I agree that um, college dropout and graduation are probably his best two albums. Right. 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 But seeing an artist free themselves and do themselves is very I, uh, pleasing for me. It's like when I go out to eat at a restaurant, I get to see a chef express themselves. Right. It's amazing. So for me, it's my favorite music of him to come out. It might not be the greatest songs, but I loved Donda. I, I did, yeah. and you called me actually the night it came out. Remember yeah. I had Donda playing and I had um, Drake's album. What uh-huh. was it? Baby Mama remember. Emoji, whatever. Uh, <laughs> that damn album. And I... And, uh, it was oh, hot sauce and a condom. What is it? Uh, something Lover Boy, right? Or... Something, Something, whatever. The only thing I can think of with Drake nowadays is that he puts he puts hot sauce in a condom, used condom. That's awesome. Good for him. Yeah, yeah that's he gives hot. her a little easy. That's um, hot. So, 
but anyways, I, I like the Kanye music now because I think that's artistically like he is really expressing himself how he wants. I would agree with that. I think that he's also developed uh, his music style. Um, I, I think when you, you know, when you look at like the the early two thousands, which is what where where Gummy Ye was from. Um, I'm going to call him Gumby Ye. Um, he, you know, his his college dropout. Like I really enjoyed in the, in the documentary where they're eating at like a Denny's mm-hmm. or or some sort of cafe like that. And all of his friends are like hyping him up and saying, "Yeah, this guy's gonna release a, gonna release an album here soon. It's gonna be called College Dropout." And these these students are sitting there in the cafe, and and basically they're telling him, "Hey, don't drop out of college." You know, like they were they were fooling around with him, but they were authentic. They were real in the in the in the in the way that it was communicated. But I felt the pain in the documentary of Through the Wire. I felt, and I never noticed that his mouth was actually wired shut I didn't while know. he was rapping that. Right. And after the episode, I had to actually go back and listen. And sure enough, his mouth is actually wired shut. And it gave me that um, that 50 Cent movie. What is it? Get Rich or Die Trying? Yeah. It gave me that vibe because I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. But um, I prefer Gummy Kanye uh, the most just because he was fresh. He was, he was hungry. He was striving. And I think that his talent was probably just starting to peak. I don't want to say that he's that he peaked then and he he's tapered off now, but I think he was finally just starting to hit that stride. And uh, his his creativity, the way that he would mesh with other artists, that like for instance Jay Z with H to the Izzo, he he laid down the beat, and then he's he's actually giving Jay Z feedback on here's how the words can fit in here and here's how this works. And his mind, just watching his mind go, it was like watching uh, Russell Crowe in a beautiful mind, just the way right. that it, the way that it was so intricate. Um, so yeah, I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose gummy yay or gumby yay or whatever yeah. we want to call it. And uh, I, not that his music's better, but I think his music was actually starting to peak. I think that that was the upswing for his music. And I'm going to choose that. That's not bad. Yeah. I don't think that, I mean, I do think that, uh, and and I don't want to sound sexist when I say this, but I do think that any man who uh, dates a Kardashian is no longer the same on the way out. <laughs> and so, how much of that has to deal with Kanye? I'm not trying to make fun of any sort of mental health or anything like that. Uh, I do think that he he might have. Uh, so just because of how creative he is, not because I'm an expert in the field, but he might have a tinge of autism just in how cr- how in depth he is and how creative he is, like an Asperger's or something like that. Um, but regardless, I I do think that he now, uh, I don't want to say he has even reached his peak. I just want to say that he's evolved. Yeah, if that makes sense. I agree with that. I think. I don't know if I'm going to agree with the spectrum thing you said. I think it's more just a perfectionist and, and really enveloped in your art. And when you have a passion, like, you know, um, when you have a passion so much about something right. that it, it can take over everything you do and that's all you think about. And I, and, and sometimes I sit back going, man, I wish I was that passionate about something that all I yeah. do was that. Yeah. No, I, I agree do, with that. And then I look back and go, oh, I'm that way probably with food or whatever. But like, that's also just enjoyable to watch, right? Right. Even though it can take over somebody, it's like you like the end product. Yeah. It's coming out. Um, I think he did a great job. It's a very good documentary. I would highly recommend it. I can't wait for the final. Or is it the final episode three? F- episode three comes out this week. Right, but that's um, the final, final that's one, the, right? That's it. It's great so far. I would definitely check it, it out. It's a good teaser for the episode as well, just yeah. with everything that's gone on with Kanye, the birth of children, marrying Kim Kardashian, uh, the potential uh, mental health. Uh, is going to be covered in there, or at least it looked like it was based on um, based on the uh, the preview. So I'm excited to watch it. Uh, unfortunately, I thought it was out before we did this, and that would have probably been a little better. But um, but no, I I do recommend watching it for sure, for sure. And that's fine. It's not. I mean, because you know we can still talk. Uh, yay, as he's going by now, multiple things. Uh, but like, uh, I want to I want to bring up something that we haven't done in a while. Okay. So we've had a we've had a very popular segment on the show, and it's also branched off into other segments, and we'll keep branching off into new segments soon. Yes. But the Everlasting Jukebox has been a fan favorite. It's been a minute since we've done an Everlasting Jukebox. And we haven't done one in a while, and it, it's one of our favorite things to do, too. So 
what I wanted to do in honor of, of Yeezy, Yay, Kanye, whatever you want to call them, um, your top five Kanye songs you're putting in the Everlasting Jewel Box, two honorable mentions like usual, um, you know, and just just why and what are you picking, B-Word? You don't have to do it in a particular okay. order. I will, but it's I'm going to do it in a particular order. Perfect. Yeah, so typically I have a hard time doing this. Uh, but but my my Kanye songs I, I like them in a particular in a particular order. You mean start with honorable mention first? Yeah, start with honorable mention. Okay, so I've got two for honorable mention. I've got Runaway, and I've got Off the Grid. Okay, good songs. I think both of those are really good songs. I think artistically and lyrically, those songs actually work out very very well uh, in what he's trying to communicate. The beats are good. The rhythm's good. Um, so very easy for me to put those two in honorable mentions. Okay. What do you got? Honorable mentions for me is Heartless. Okay. Love that song. Love the Bud Knight Platinum commercial. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> um, and in the night, I hear him talk. Yeah. That's the one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, love that song. It. Uh, I think Silverstein, one of my favorite bands too, did a cover they of that. They did do a cover of that. Great, yeah. great rendition yeah. of that. Um, just good... It, it shows his beat making abilities, I think, and well, it's yeah, and it was a it it, it had a story to tell, right. which I appreciate. It wasn't just you know saying whatever; it it actually had a story to tell. So, and that was I think actually the first Kanye album I actually bought. Oh, really? <laughs> bought uh, and didn't a, didn't didn't uh, uh, illegally you pirate didn't, bay? Yeah, yeah, you didn't. Uh, I was working uh, at Nordstrom at the time. Okay. And when it came out, um, I saw it and I was like, whose album is this? And I just picked it up and fell in love with that song. Next one is "Can't Tell Me Nothing," and it's just okay. one of those. It's it's a good. It was in between that. I think Gold Digger maybe, but I just didn't go that route. Can't tell me that I like the song, uh, but it still can't. It's one of those like I love singing along to the chorus. Do you remember the first time you heard it? Yeah. What were you doing? I was driving a car, and I was with a buddy. And then when I heard the ha ha, you can't tell me. I had to sing along to it. Yeah. And it's one of those. Um, but it still doesn't make my top five. So I do have Can't Tell Me Nothing as my number five. Okay. Um, and the reason why is because I was actually driving in Vegas. Okay. And similar to you, I had a friend in the car, and we were driving, and, and uh, I was listening to it, and all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, this is this sounds really good. And I remember turning it up. Shortly thereafter, it was on uh, The Hangover, and it was on their drive from L.A. to Las Vegas in the mm-hmm. beginning of the movie. And to be honest with you, I heard Can't Tell Me Nothing prior to that, and I'd heard it a few times, but it really didn't stick with me until The Hangover on on their, on their its soundtrack. Really? And so I, it, it was at that point I went, oh, yeah, I remember that song, mm-hmm. and I started blasting it r- routinely. I think I listened to it every day. So Can't Tell Me Nothing's my number five. That's a good one. Uh, my number five is Jail Part Two off of Donda. That's a good one. I thought on the album, it's my favorite song on the album. Um, I know Marilyn Manson is technically in it. I still have a hard time finding that. Didn't he just produce it? I, he maybe. I just saw featuring, and I just I, I I was waiting for like the moment, like with uh, one of my favorite um, DMX songs, "The Omen," too, <laughs> with Marilyn Manson singing in it. I just kept like, so maybe I'm stupid. Okay, uh, this goes back to me not really paying attention to producers. B word. I just showed it where I'm going. You're like, didn't he produce it? Yeah, you probably fucking did. I'm waiting. I'm going. When is he singing? I'm like, man, he sounds a lot like Little Baby or Kanye. <laughs> um, I love that song though. Um, I like. I think it's catchy enough. It does sort of like the feeling like Blood on the Leaves does for me, where right. it's. It's got that almost like auto tune easy sound that you like. Um, enough repetitiveness that you can sing along to it, but also catchy enough that it's it's enjoyable to okay. sing it over and over again. So that would be ni- my number five. Okay. So my number four, I've got slow jams. Okay. And the reason why I have slow jams is because it's it's I, I use the word nostalgic a lot when I'm describing things. So I, I'm I'm going to try not to use the word nostalgic. It makes me remember a time when I would, it was like my club days, kind of, where I was, oh. I was, no, but in a good way, where it was, I was in a mode where it wasn't just about partying, it was about having a Getting good time. Laid. Well, yeah, <laughs> that too. But it was about having a good time, but it was really trying to get that, when, when, when I got out of, so when I got divorced, this is this little personal thing here, when I got divorced... I really didn't understand, like, why I was getting divorced, per se. Like, I knew why I was getting divorced, but I didn't know how to comprehend it. And there was a lot of music that I listened to coming out of that that helped me either understand it or helped me rationalize it. And not that Slow Jams was one of those, but it was in that era. 
And for me, I, I felt a deep appreciation of arts at that time, whether it was movies, music, books, whatever, just something to, to get me to like things again. And so that era of music uh, did a lot for me. And so okay. Slow Jams is in there for me. Number four is Barry Bonds featuring Little Wayne. Jeez. I really? I love that song. <sighs> I love the beat to that song. Here's the thing. So uh, you, you got to know something about me when you were hanging out with me last week when you were there. I still use an old iPod. Yes, you do. Classic, with like 40,000 songs on so, it. So, and let me back this up here real quick, because not only does Jake use an iPod classic, he plugs it in through the media port in his car, <laughs> and you have the capability to Bluetooth in your car. <laughs> I don't know if you have like Apple Play in your car. No. But regardless... Why? I have an iPod. Uh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, but also, you know how much music I have. The only thing that would have made that better is if you if your little media wire was hooked to a cassette tape and you put it in I the I used to do that. Tape. I still oh have God, the cassette so tape. Stupid. I used to do that. But no, no, mine is uh, plugged in, in into my console. Um, I still have an iPod. I have one of the original iPods. I still have the Apple Car on it. So I'm the guy that shows up and still bitches them that gets me a new one. When they need to replace it, I still get a new one to this day. I think I got that one two years ago. I'm the guy that's that's the only thing keeping those alive, barely in a warehouse. That's so um, funny. But I think because like you you saw my music collection, I'm like very, I'm very anal about it. Like I have every album, all the artwork, right. and you in my car, you see every yep. artwork shows up. Yep. It's all correct. Like yep. it probably lists all the fucking producers and everything that I don't read. But um, when that song comes on, I have to listen to it. Okay. It's just, it, I love it. I can sing along to it. I like Little Wayne in it. I like him. I like the beat. When As soon as it starts, it's got one of those beats, like right when it starts, you know it's the fucking song. Right. That's what I enjoy about right. it. Um, And I just, and I like when he goes, because <laughs> it gets you that, Kanye, like sometimes would just put noises in a song and you enjoy yeah. them. And I just like that song. I know it probably will not even come close. It's almost like my draft day pick for a song, but I think it's a lot of people <laughs> probably wouldn't agree with me, but it's a great fucking song, dude. Okay. I love it. So that's mine. I'm going to go jump in because you, you know, you went and I just want to do this because I'm cheating right now. Okay. My number three, and I can't say it, is the N-word in Paris. Oh, yeah. From Watch the Throne. I, I, okay. So that almost made my top five. Right. And here's the reason why it didn't is because I can't say the word. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the I, only I, reason? I swear to God, dude, I didn't want to be on a podcast and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. Uh, so, you know, but yes, almost made my top five for that reason, because that's a phenomenal song. Well, it's a phenomenal song. It's one of the most catchy songs, a yes. great music video. I still want the Yeezy shirt with the stars around his neck that he, that he had from the music video. Um, amazing beat. The only reason I say it's cheating is I thought, you know, it's technically not his album. It's Watch the Throne. Yep. But it's still a Kanye song, but it's... Yep. But I put it on there because I, I f absolutely fucking love that song. That's a good song. It's a great I, song. I cannot blame you for that one. Yeah. Uh, so that was your third, right? That's my number three. Okay, so my number three is Gold Digger. Really? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, and <clears throat> so I put Slow Jams on here because you've got Jamie Foxx sounding like Ray Charles. Okay. Gold Digger is also on here because Gold Digger is one of the first songs that I remember actually going, hey, who is this artist? Uh, because I didn't know it at first. And it had Jamie Foxx on it, yep. sounding like Ray Charles. Now, I'm a huge fan of Ray Charles. I think Ray Charles' music is phenomenal. Um, I love the movie Ray, actually, okay. with, uh, with Jamie Foxx in it. I think Jamie Foxx did a phenomenal job. Um, so Gold Digger for me is number three. Uh, it is kind of catchy. It is kind of that white girl rap song, if you will. Okay. Um, but I love it, and I, you know what I love most about it? What? I love the fact that it in, that it actually includes other rappers. Yeah. But I mean, that's why I got Little Wayne, right? Yeah, I, I can't, I can't hate on Little Wayne. I just don't Jay -Z like Jay Z, and yeah, yeah. most yeah. rap songs have other rappers. B word. <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> so you just did your number three. I just did mine. Let's uh, let's continue this path. What's your number two? Late. Okay. Um, that's actually my favorite album, too, Late Registration. Okay. Uh, but it's it's one of those, uh, first time I heard it, loved, I like the story that it has. 
essentially reminded me of college days. Like, yep. yeah, shit. I went, I think of that. Like, that's how I felt. Like I'm, I'm an overachiever underachieving in class with basket weavers, not giving right. a fuck. Right. But right. also pissed off. Why am I here? But also I, I don't want to try hard enough to be in calculus. Right. Right. It's, it's the epitome of every egotistical genius in his own right with certain things who also is a procrastinating lazy fuck at times. Yeah. Exactly Kanye in this documentary, right? Yeah. There absolutely. are moments I think in his brain where it's like, I know I'm the fucking best. I can do this. I can make this. But I'm over here with these motherfuckers because I didn't want to apply myself at that moment to right. this. Right. Um, and I totally can relate to that song. That's why it's so high on my list. Okay. Um, I just, I, I just, I, I think that's, like I said, it's also, I think it's cause it's off my favorite fucking album. Okay. So I, I, I can't dispute that. That's a, that's a really good song. Um, my number two, Jesus walks. Okay. Uh, and it's basically for the music video, not necessarily the actual song. Although the song is catchy, uh, very, very catchy, but the music video was a production and I, I, you know what made, you know what this documentary made me miss music videos. Yeah. Oh. Like MTV, TRL. Yeah. And all, actually all of that seeing sort of like when they came out and there was yeah. a huge production behind it. And it was exciting to watch because it was almost like a movie and he, he was right. one of those people in that generation right. doing that. Yeah. 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 And so Jesus Walks was a really good one. I remember um, when that one came out, when MTV still played music, like it's it's unheard of how they call themselves music television anymore. Um, well, we're never going to get sponsored by them either. But uh, so yeah, Jesus Walks is definitely my number two. So number one, do you want to go first or do you, you want me? First. Okay. Through the wire. Through the wire. Through the wire. Why? It was my first exposure to Kanye West, um, candidly. Okay. But I like the Alvin and the Chipmunk style vocals okay. in there that helps with it. And I think what solidified it is actually the documentary. Yeah. Because you and I had discussed putting putting together this list and trying to figure out, okay, where is this all going to fit in, right? And what are we going to do? And what's what's the rundown going to look like and whatever? And watching this, like, Through the Wire has been stuck in my head this, this entire week. And I love the song. So, yeah, Through the Wire is it. My answer is going to sound so fucking stupid now. Okay. It's superficial. And the epitome of what I look for sometimes in a meaningless hip hop song. Okay. Ride Slow featuring Paul Wall. <laughs> I love me some fucking <laughs> Dr. Teeth, Paul Wall. I could sing along with it. Here's the other reason, too. The very first song I ever rode to in my car, <laughs> drove in a car, right? Was Picture Me Rolling by Tupac, right? Okay. <laughs> Any song about driving around, picking up chicks, and a cooler guy is singing it to me, I'm a fucking fan of. I'm a right fan slow. of it through and through. That song is stuck in my head right now as we're singing. All I'm thinking of is ride slow, <laughs> homie, ride slow. Like that, and that, it, it, my favorite fucking Kanye song. And like I said, you're coming out here like, yeah, that documentary really made me think. And you know, the genius about it. I'm over here going, yeah, the artist being the artist and all that. And then I come out with fucking ride slow, homie. <laughs> It's not a bad song. It's a it just, fucking great song. It just, yeah, that, that just caught me off guard. But it's, I, I feel like an asshole because I'm over here talking about art and, mind you, it's art. It's it's a great fucking song. Um, it was during the Chopped and Screwed movement that yep. coming out. Yep. Uh, but I, There's a lot of good music in the Chopped and Screwed. I love that fucking song, though. Okay, so I know that we didn't prepare this, but in the Chopped and Screwed movement, movement did you appreciate, like, T Pain and yeah, because I have the chopped and screwed album. Yeah. I have all of Paul Wall's album. Did you know they all come in a chopped and screwed version too? No, I did which not. Which takes forever to listen to because sometimes it's <laughs> and it's just and one time I went, I go, why is this song fifteen minutes long? And it says the chopped and screwed version. I'm like, who's listening to this? It's like a. It's like an audio book written by, read by Satan off of South Park backwards. about a hip hop album. Yeah. yeah, yeah, backwards. Anyways, that's that's my number one, dude. I'm gonna stick by it. It's a fuck. I I can I put can't that hate on, on you and for that. drive anywhere and feel good about myself tonight. I can't hate on you tonight. for that. I can't hate on you for that at all. No. All right, man. So we did a pretty darn good job here. At least I think uh, I'm a little biased in my top five, but uh, again, it's a. Uh, my top five is better than your top five. 
You have a lot of good ones in your top five that I don't have. If my top five fought your top five, your top five would be dead in a gutter right now. Pete Davidson prefers my top five over your top five. And my top five would ride slow away, homie. <laughs> <laughs> with blood on the leaves. <laughs> Well, with that, man, this is going to be a little uh, a little quicker episode than we're normally used to because we're in person and we're going to spend a little bit of time together. But uh, thanks, man, for helping me put this one together, and uh, we'll get this all chopped and screwed up to post cool. for this upcoming weekend. But with that, my man, what do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty tech, and come back and get sanitized. This is Jake from the Bleach Bros Podcast, and thank you for listening to today's episode. I want to bring to your attention our link tree. Visit linktree forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast for access to all of our socials, merch, and streaming sites. Linktree is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast, all one word. And if you enjoy our content, make sure to give us a like, give us a review on whatever platform you are listening on, and also invite your friends.